I'm Jeffrey Kluger for Time, and we're here today to ask questions of Stephen Hawking, perhaps the world's best known living cosmologist, physicist, and mathematician. Hawking is known as much for the body of his work as for the obstacles he's had to overcome to conduct that work. Ill with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, since 1962, Hawking has been confined to a wheelchair and has been fully paralyzed for several decades. That hasn't stopped him, however, from producing six popular science books, including the recently released The Grand Design, and two children's books written with his daughter Lucy. We sent your questions to Dr. Hawking three weeks in advance, and in that time he assembled his answers one letter at a time by computer and then expressed them through a voice synthesis system. Stephen Hawking will now take your questions. We have a question from Stamford, Connecticut. If somehow you could say something to Albert Einstein, what would you say? I would ask him why he didn't believe in black holes. The field equations of his general theory of relativity imply that a large star, or cloud of gas, would collapse in on itself and form a black hole. Einstein was aware of this, but somehow managed to convince himself that something like an explosion would always occur to throw off mass and prevent the formation of a black hole. What if there was no explosion? Do you think our civilization will survive long enough to make the leap to deeper space? I think we have a good chance of surviving long enough to colonize the solar system. However, there is nowhere else in the solar system anything like as suitable as the Earth, so it is not clear if we would survive if the Earth was made unfit for habitation. To ensure our long-term survival, we need to reach the stars. That will take much longer. Let's hope we can last until then. Do you feel that your physical limitations have helped or hindered your study? Although I was unfortunate enough to get motor neuron disease, I have been very fortunate in almost everything else. I was lucky to be working in theoretical physics, one of the few areas in which disability was not a serious handicap, and to hit the jackpot with my popular books. What scientific discovery or technological advancement would you like to see realized in your lifetime? I would like nuclear fusion to become a practical power source. It would provide an inexhaustible supply of energy without pollution or global warming. I guess everyone here will be asking you questions about the deepest mysteries of the universe, so I will ask something more mundane. What is your favorite memory? It was when I visited Antarctica in 1997. The Chilean Air Force flew a group of theoretical physicists down to their base on King George Island off the Antarctica Peninsula. My wheelchair didn't have snow chains, but they took me round on a snowmobile. Does the universe end? If so, what is beyond it? Observations indicate that the universe is expanding at an ever-increasing rate. It will expand forever getting emptier and darker. Although the universe doesn't have an end, it had a beginning in the Big Bang. One might ask what is before that, but the answer is that there is nowhere before the Big Bang, just as there is nowhere south of the South Pole. Does it feel like a huge responsibility to have people expecting you to have all the answers to all of life's mysteries? I certainly don't have the answers to all life's problems. While physics and mathematics may tell us how the universe began, they are not much use in predicting human behavior, because there are far too many equations to solve. I'm no better than anyone else at understanding what makes people tick, particularly women.